Let's talk about some stuff for a while that you already know. How about that? Is that okay? Ooh, wrong way. If I start here at 2 fifths and go to this fraction right here, what have I done? So I have made an equivalent fraction by doing what to both parts? Multiplying both parts, and I'm going to be more general. You were very specific for this problem by 20. We're going to say right here, multiplying both parts by the same thing. What do we mean by both parts? Numerator and denominator, right? Both parts of the rational expression are both parts of the fraction. Fair enough? What if I'm going backwards? This way to this way. Dividing both parts by, good. What about this next part? That, that's a part you knew about, right? You've been doing that since, what, fifth grade or sixth grade or something like that? This looks really scary. Are we frightened by math anymore? No. We, okay, fair, fair enough, sometimes. Sometimes I'm, I'm frightened by math, and that's okay, right? But this kind of stuff, hopefully not, okay? You can make equivalent what kind of expressions? Rational. Oh, look, it's even in the title of the worksheet, right? Rational. Wait, what does that word even mean? Look. What does that mean? Ratio. What's another word for Ratio. Fraction. Wait a second. This up here said fraction. You're, you're telling me this is going to be like the same? Oh. You can make equivalent rational expressions by... What do you think? Uh-huh. Multiplying both parts by the same thing. Now, notice real quick that this one's a little different. has a little bit of different words in there. We're okay with that, okay? You can simplify, what do you think? Rational expressions by close. Canceling common, my second favorite F word, factors. Yes, good job. Okay. How do you feel about this? Excellent. Okay. So let's look at some examples. Somebody choose one that we can see right now. Five. Okay. Let's choose five. What do you think I might need to do first? Factor. Yeah. I need a factor. If I factor the numerator, what do I get? What do both terms have in common? They're both divisible by 3, right? So if I factor out a 3, what I have left is what? x minus 4. Excellent. What about the denominator? What do both of these two terms have in common? x. If I factor out an x, what do I have left in the denominator? x minus 4, right? Now, if, capital if, I was a ridiculous little child, I would cancel the x's and cancel the 4's. But we know better, because we are not ridiculous little childs, right? We cancel the x minus 4 with the x minus 4. Is there really that big of a difference? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay? I'll show you why. Uh, another example will come up here in just a second. I'll show you what I mean. Okay? What is left in this problem as my answer? 3 over x. Choose another one. Oh, that we can see. One of these. Two. Okay, so if we're going to look at two, 
What do we need to do first? Factor, okay, is there anything I can factor in the numerator? No. So I just get three. Is there anything I can factor in the denominator? Are both of these terms divisible by the same thing? What? Three. If I factor out a three, what do I have left? 2x plus 5, right? Now, is there anything I can cancel with from numerator and denominator? Does numerator and denominator have the same factor? 3. Can I cancel out those 3's? Yes, because they are factors. Factors is all I can cancel out. I can't cancel numbers that are being added, subtracted or to each other. I can only cancel things that are being multiplied. Only factors. Okay? Now, a lot of times people tell me the answer to this problem is 2x plus 5. Someone please tell me why they are wrong. Why is the answer not 2x plus 5? Because it's in the denominator. What is left in the numerator when I cancel my 3? A 1. So my answer is 1 over 2x plus 5. Does that really make such a big difference? Oh, yes, it does. You're correct. Okay? All right. Then let's just jump straight into number 8. Straight into number 8. If I was a ridiculous little child, what would I cancel? X squareds. Can I do that? I am not a ridiculous little child, so I know I can't do that. Let me show you what you could do if you were allowed to cancel x squareds. Okay? If you were allowed to start canceling x squareds and canceling x's and stuff like that, that would be the same as if I simplified this fraction right here by crossing out the ones and crossing out this line over here and getting an answer that looked like this. That's silly, isn't it? That's a ridiculous little child answer. We cannot do that. If you're trying to do this, you can also cancel x squareds. Can we cancel x squareds? No, because they are not factors. This term is being added or subtracted to So that would be ridiculous, wouldn't it? Okay? So let's start let's start overthinking. Not not, not overthinking. Let's start thinking over again. Okay? If I'm just looking at the numerator, what do you think I have to do with this? I have to factor it. It's a trinomial with a leading coefficient of 1, so what multiplies to be negative 14 and adds to be negative 5? Negative 7 and positive 2. x minus 7, x plus 2. Now let's look at the denominator. It's a trinomial with a leading coefficient of 1, what multiplies to be 12 and adds to be 8? 6 and 2 x plus 6, x plus 2. What can I do? I can cancel stuff, right? Because there are common factors. What is the common factor that occurs in the numerator and the denominator? x plus 2. I cross out x plus 2 and x plus 2. Remember, ridiculous little child can cancel out the x's and the 2's. That's not what we did. We canceled out the whole factor. So as an answer, I get x minus 7 over x plus 6. And now I cancel out the x's. Wait, I don't? I don't cancel out the x's? Why not? They're being added or subtracted. They're not factors. You're trying to do this again, right? Don't do that. Turn this paper over. Yep, that's it. Yeah, that's just the answer. That's all we can do. Okay? All right, please circle number two, number five, and number eight. Those are the ones I want you guys to do tonight, along with the five from the workbook on the, that we wrote down in our lesson plans. Five, why did I say five? Ten. Okay? Ten from the workbook, and then these three on this page, right? All right, here's the notes for, the last, for that last page, for that last section. Multiplying, I wonder why it says adding and subtracting. That's really funny. Okay, so let's fix that right now. Let's fix it. 
multiplying and dividing. I mean, you can write out the words if you want, but I'm just going to write the symbols because I know what they mean. How do I multiply fractions? Mm -hmm, that's exactly what I do. Straight across and straight across. So what do I end up with right here? 15 over 28. So my steps were multiply, straight, across. Now for short, I'm going to say MSA because I want to be able to write that down here later on if I need to without having to rewrite that whole thing. Are you okay with that? Okay. So what happens if I have a rational expression then? Do I do any different rules? So I still multiply straight across and get 2x. And I still multiply straight across here and get x minus 4 times x plus 1. Yep, done. If there was a time I wanted you to multiply that out, I'd make sure to tell you. But think about the things that we were just doing right here. Didn't I want everything factored so that there were, if I could factor out common terms, they were already done? So leave it like this. It's perfectly fine. Okay? Look at number two. How would I do this problem? Oh, two over one. So I'm just some sort of like a math magician that can just put boom, two over one, and that's good? Yeah, I am. Okay? That's allowed. If I'm really doing rational expressions, every, everything has to be a fraction, right? I'm always allowed to put something over one. And then I just what? Multiply straight across, right? Eight over nine. So how do we want to word that for our steps? What? Yeah, that'll go down here, right? Multiply straight across. What did I have to do first? Put it over one. You going to know what that means later? Good. Okay, I'll let you say it then. That's fine. So here, put this over one, multiply straight across. 24 over x plus 6. Really? That's it? Yep. Put this over one, multiply straight across. 8 times x plus 1 over x plus 6. Really? That's it? Yeah, that's it. Look at number 3. <clears throat> what do I do? Oh, but look, I have a 4 in the numerator and a 4 in the denominator. Isn't that a common factor? So can I... Yes. And then multiply straight across, right? So simplify. And then multiply straight across. So what would I do on this one? Simplify and multiply straight across. I know some of you were like, wait, this is easy. And yeah, you're right, it is. What about here? I need to simplify again, right? But there's not a 4 and a 4. There's a 4 and a 6. Is that allowed? They're both divisible by what? 2. So this becomes a 2, and this becomes a 3. Can I, do something? Can I do anything else? Oh, the 5. So this becomes a 1, and this becomes a 3. Oh, I got two 3s, so I can cancel those out too, right? What? Why not? Oh, they're both in the denominator. What do I get? 2 over 9. So again, simplify and multiply straight across. Yes? So I'm going to go ahead and factor this real quick. x plus 4, x plus 5. And I'm going to go ahead and factor this real quick. 2x minus 3. You okay with that? What can I do? Cross out the x plus 5s. Absolutely. Cross out the x minus 3s. Anything else? So what's the wrong answer that people tell me? 2 times x plus 4, right? Why is 2 times x plus 4 the wrong answer? Because it's 1 over that, right? Remember when we're simplifying and there's nothing left? There really is something. It's a 1. Okay? Now, we kind of need to do this 
th these at the same time, so I'm going to do this bottom one because it's a little bit more involved, just for time's sake. Okay? Do we ever divide by fractions? Ever. No, we don't. What do we do instead? Multiply by the reciprocal. 3 over 2 times what? 8 over 1. Somebody always asks me, how do we know which one to flip? Which one are you dividing by? I'm dividing by this one. This is the one I flip. You understand? So I end up with, oh, I can simplify this, right? 1, 4, and I just get 12. So multiply by the reciprocal and then multiply straight across after we simplify if we need to. Okay? So this is 4 over x plus 3. May I please factor as I, as I find the reciprocal? Are you guys allowed to do that? Absolutely. So this is x plus 1 and x plus 3. And this is over x minus 7, right? So what can I do? X, uh, x plus 3's. What's left? Yeah, that's just the answer. I know. Okay, any questions? Okay, so you have these three right here, down, right down the middle of that page to do, and then the 10 in the workbook. Oh, look at all these extra that you could do for extra credit. Isn't that so nice? Yay, yay it is. Okay, I hope you have a great day. Peace.